Okay, thanks for, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I think this talk is possibly a little out of the sweet spot, as I was saying earlier, for this conference, but um, I, I hopefully you'll uh, enjoy it. Um, so we're talking today about uh, PWAs, and uh, I'm Steve Lomas, uh, and I'm going to walk you through this. <clears throat> so real quick, here's, we'll, we're going to kind of explain what a PWA is, talk about the promise there's always promise, right? We're all marketers. Then there's the reality of it, and the reality is, is the hard part. Um, the meaning, like I've had to do, I've done a lot of digging to try to understand what's what's smoke and what's mirrors, you know, in, in terms of this. And then uh, then we'll show some branded examples and get into some Q and A. I've got some really good resources at the end. This deck will be eventually available to everybody. Uh, I'll probably be posting it on my website uh, in the next week or so. But you can always reach out to me, and I could I could hook you up as well. So, just a show of hands here. How many people already know what a PWA is? Perfect. <laughs> That's zero for the camera. Okay, great. Well, then, then I feel good about that, actually. I thought people would be throwing rocks and they go, what? You don't, you don't. Okay. So, uh, so, I'm guessing that you, the answer is zero, right? I, I want to tell you, you probably, you, prob smart. you probably will be surprised to learn that you have. Uh, and then I guess the answer is no here. No one's yeah, developed. No one that one, yeah. So okay. So <laughs> I, I want you to know that I'm on my own personal PWA journey. I'm we've really been digging into this. We're about to. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to pretend that I'm a PWA expert. Not quite yet. But I certainly know more about it than the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> I probably know more about it than anybody else here at the show. But I don't, you know, I'm not trying to pretend that I have it all locked in yet. But I've, the last year I've been really digging into it and really trying to understand it. So uh, what you're going to get is the benefit of my research and get you from zero to 60 in the next few minutes. Uh, and uh, as I said, we're about to build our first. We've been pitching these to clients, looking for the right fit. And you'll learn more about that soon. There's a lot of great reasons to uh, think about this. And this de deck represents my research, and I said the resources at the end. So here we go, what's a PWA? Well, the simplest, this is one of the best definitions I saw, and I stole it, I don't, you know, don't mind saying that. Um, it, it's the Progressive Web App is a website that uses modern web technologies to deliver an app-like experience on your mobile devices, right? Uh, and it's not just mobile, it can be any browser, including your desktop. So that means uh, you can have things like push notifications. You, on the mobile device, you have access to the camera. You have access to your photos. You have access to the sensors on your camera. And you can't do that in a website right now, okay? But you can if the website has been, has this PWA layer added to it. Suddenly it can interact with your devices in ways that are much more compelling. So that's, uh, and you know, there's no native app installation. We'll get into more of this. So. The key technology is a thing called service workers. This is um, a, a technology that really what it allows you to do is, uh, it's a kind of a complicated concept to get your head around, but it allows your app to know what's happened even when it hasn't been connected. Not while it's, not while it's not connected, but the next time it connects, it now understands what's happened in the in, in, in past. So things like push notifications. You weren't connected to the network, now you are, suddenly you got all these push notifications coming up. It knows how to look for these things and uh, keep you connected. Uh, it's a very powerful technology that also is going to be really important in emerging uh, technology uh, areas where bandwidth is low or the technology is not quite there because if you, if you lose connectivity, the app still, your website still works. And then you pick up connectivity and ask updating and stuff. So you almost don't even know you've lost connectivity. It's just a much smoother experience. It's very, very cool. So, uh, so I'm not going to explain. It's a type of JavaScript. Is what, uh, it's, a, it's a special flavor of JavaScript, and they call these service workers. Uh, <clears throat> so the promise. So first of all, if you've been d designing native apps you know, uh, for Android or for iOS, uh, and other devices, you have to kind of make a version of it. Then, this is the claim is one code base works across everything, but almost invariably you have to really kind of massage that to get it to work on those different platforms. <coughs> this really is one app across everything. It's a website. It's a website that behaves like an app on an Android 
on an iPhone, on Microsoft devices, it behaves like an app. It's pretty cool. So uh, it's always up to date because why? You don't have to go install anything. Every time you hit that site, and even if you didn't plan on hitting the site, the app will update itself. As soon as you click on the app, it updates itself if there's anything to be updated. There's no App Store or Google Play Store involved. So you, the installation, very, you just like saving, anybody saved a, a website or a, a you know, like a, a bookmark to their desktop on their phone, right? It's just like that. So you just say save it you, through that same experience. And it looks like just another icon on there, but it caches and it's living on your phone. It, and it's pretty cool, so it's really fast. No submission process because you're not going through that. You don't have to be a developer or developer. No regulations about this other than some basic privacy things that you would have to deal with anyway. Um, easy to find. So instead of having to search for an app in a Google Play or the App Store, this is just basic SEO, you know. This is a website, and you, you want someone to see the app. You can, it'll just show up in Google in a search you know, using standard SEO technology. Uh, so it's identifiable as an application. So when Google finds it, it knows it's an app. It doesn't just say, "Oh, there's a website." It knows it's an app, and that's because again of service worker technology and the manifest. Uh, that's, you know, all this has been worked out with the browser companies, and so it's just. Really cool technology. It's installable on the home screen, we just mentioned that. And there's no waiting because uh, you just save it and you got it. And uh, it's, you know, it's not like waiting for, I can't wait for them to update the app. Even as a developer, you know, we'll make an app, then we submit it to Apple, and so often they go, well, it should be on, online in the next week or so. We're just waiting for Apple to approve it. There's none of that. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned this here, so if you're doing any kind of in-app purchases, Apple's not getting the 30% cut of anything. Mm -hmm. So that's a big deal, right? Okay. Um, so uh, the, again, still in the promise, it's shareable. It's as easy as sharing a URL. Like here's the website, here's the app. And someone clicks on it, boom, they're getting it. It's right then and there, it's instant. Um, you can work offline, I mentioned that. That's again, that service worker technology. Uh, so it's progressive, which this, what this means, it works on any browser, any age of browser. It, it's all figured out in this technology in the background. It's not like, oh, it won't work on this browser or that browser. It's just, it's all, it's all ironed out. They've done a really good job with that. Uh, it's responsive, like, so I, I, when you hear progressive web app, I think people immediately think, oh, responsive <laughs> site. A responsive site is one that scales to fit the window, right? So this is progressive, it's, it does do that, it is responsive, but it also sort of regresses to the quality of the technology it's on. So it, that's why it works on any browser and any agent. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of facts here. Uh, fits on a, it's secure. By its very nature, it has to be SSL, so it's secure. So that means all your data and everything is, uh, is encrypted and it's really safe. Um, and of course, it is fast. See how fast that was? It's already gone. Okay. And the reality, <laughs> the reality, uh, okay, here we get into some of these things. So first of all, the good news is, the reality is it really is fast. In many cases, a PWA-enabled uh, website is faster than a native app on, on your phone. So that's a really cool thing. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so... But the truth is, it is still a little early. This technology, uh, you know, was uh, actually created, we'll talk about this, you know, uh, a while ago. Uh, uh, Google has been uh, really pushing it. Let me, and I'll explain some more about that. So it's uneven performance. Everybody's trying to figure out how to make this work. And I've got examples of, uh, we'll talk about examples of apps that are just killing it. And you swear it was a native app through and through. And others where it's like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. And that's more about implementation and not about the technology. Um, but it is uh, early, so people are still figuring out. Think of the early days of just websites in general. You'd go to the one that was really great, you know, a Starbucks app or something, and uh, or you go to you know some mom and pop app, uh, website that's terrible. Uh, it's the same same thing applies. You know, when when the laser printer came mm -hmm. out, you, there was a lot of bad type and a lot of bad typography because everybody thought they could be a designer. Uh, Google has a head start on this, but Apple's playing catch up. Here, the funny thing is, Apple actually created this technology. They created it when the iPhone first came out. 
before, the, as you remember, there wasn't an app store for us for the first year or so. And they created this technology to be able to deliver these apps for their phone. And then they created the app store and said, ah, we don't need this, we're gonna have our own proprietary thing. And they just dropped it. Meanwhile, Google's smart enough to go, that's pretty cool technology. So they picked it up and really run with it. And now Apple's kind of been forced to come back in and honor it. And even though this has been around now, some of the apps that I've seen that go back to 2015, so four years, you think, what? why is this new? It's only in the last year that Apple's really gotten on board. And while there's probably more Android devices out there than, than iPhones or whatever, but um, nobody was gonna jump on, really jump on board in a big way until you knew it really was ubiquitous. That, okay, now this is gonna work for everybody. And so just by Apple getting involved, um, I, it's really lifted the promise of this technology. Okay, um, so here's some things that uh, PWAs can only do on an Android compared to iOS. You know, background sync and web push. Uh, web banner, uh, this is where it automatically says, you want, you want me to save this to your desktop. On the, on, currently on, on Apple, you have to either prompt them in a message on your website, or just, they just have to know to save it like you would save a bookmark. People have figured that out, so I think uh, they'll, they'll get that. Um, Bluetooth uh, access for, this is BLE of the low energy uh, devices. Speech recognition, so there's a number of things that Android got the, a jump on right now. But there's plenty you can do on iOS right now. Geolocation is a big one. Uh, all this, you know, most of the sensors, the gyroscope, accelerometer, and magnetometer, and we've got a camera, of course, and audio output. So you can do a lot with this that you couldn't do with a website. I think the right way to look at this is if you have a mobile web, a website right now and on a mobile device, um, it's not performing that great. And, and it's all about mobile, if you've been following, right now on average, anywhere, depending on the market, anywhere from 50 to 75% of your users are accessing, of all traffic, is mobile. So it's made, that's why a couple of years ago, uh, Google said that they were gonna start penalizing websites that didn't perform well on mobile. They won't even let them show up in the search rankings. It's because they saw that that's where that trend, this is all part of that whole initiative. How do we make mobile web experience better? And uh, that's what this is all about. So it, uh, these are some things that you know uh, can do on iOS, speech synthesis with headsets. Now I don't know why, only if you have your headsets connected. We wouldn't want to hear that, you know. Uh, Apple Pay, I put an asterisk there because I've heard, I've read uh, conflicting things and I haven't had a chance to dive into that. But at least one uh, trusted source said you can do Apple Pay and I think it's more current. I think the other was older. Um, Gestures, you can do all the gestures that you can do on your mobile devices now. Um, and uh, web share right, right from the app. So that's that little icon that says, hey, I want to share this with somebody. And then you can add it to your apps and send it to someone. Um, some limitations. Uh, I'm trying to get to the visual stuff. I realize there's a lot of info. Uh, limitations compared to iOS native apps. Well, there's no push notifications. You don't get that badge icon right now. But Apple has said they're working on it. It, it, then, you know, the, the holy grail, that little red dot. Boy, it's like Pavlov's dog, man. I mean, that little red dot's there, I'm gonna fix that. I gotta get rid of that dot. So it really works. Um, and just no Siri integration at the moment. No access to execute, uh, execute code in the background, which I personally, as a consumer, I kinda like that. Uh, I prefer, like, while I'm using it, do what you have to do, right? Um, no access to private information. That's Apple's, you know, very uh, much, um, leading the way, frankly, on you know guarding your private information and not letting apps and uh, get at that without your permission. Uh, so limitations compared to native apps. Uh, and, and if you think this is a little focused on iOS, it's because that's where all the, the reality comes in. You know, the Android devices are, are, are ahead. And it's this gotcha stuff that I think is interesting. It's taken some digging to find. So there's a limit of 50 megabytes of online storage on your device, and then it's round robin, you know, first in, first out. Uh, that's still quite a bit. I mean, uh, you'll see some of these apps all in are only like 200K, you know, on your phone. So 50 megabytes is a ton. Um, the user doesn't use the app. So one of the things with iOS is that if you haven't used it for a while, they'll, they'll flush your, your uh, storage. 
But the moment you click the, the icon will stay on your screen, you click it, it just reloads. So you haven't really lost anything, it's just you have to watch it load one more time. And, and, and the load times are wicked fast, like a second or two, and you've already loaded it. So, you know, because again, if it's only 200K, how long does it take to load that, right? Uh, 300K, 400K, so it depends on the app. And there's some other uh, technologies here. So you'll get all this in the slides. Uh, but so here's how I would summarize all that right now, uh, is that a PWA is much more than a mobile website, or a current website, but not quite a native app, right? There are things that, so it's not like, oh, I, don't, I no longer need to worry about developing a native app. You might. It really depends on, uh, really depends on your application. Um, there's lots of things. Its ability to manage the storage and cache and save that to your, your phone in the background without having to ask you about that and just do, does it naturally means that it's so quick. The next time you click on that thing, it's there. And it can manage, uh, it, it, if there's a large data set, it can do uh, you know, kind of look ahead downloads and whatnot so that as you're going through images and whatnot. And one of the key premises of uh, Progressive and that's where the progressive comes in, by the way, part of it, is that <clears throat> you should be able to act and work in the app while you're waiting for the heavier assets to get there. So let's say you get to a page and there's a really beautiful image, and you go, what? Well, yeah, that's the home page. I need to go to this other page. You can go ahead and do that before the image. You don't have to wait for anything. Now, if you wait a moment, the image is there, but you can, as fast as you can move, you, you probably won't be waiting on the app. If you just know where you want to go, and you can get there. Um, okay, here we go. Um, and I have a whole bunch of apps on my iPad that I could demo, but there is, I don't think there's time to do that. So what I've done is I've just kind of taken some case studies, let you know. Mm -hmm. So remember I said, have you ever done it? If you've ever gone to a mobile, if you've used your browser to go to Twitter uh, because you didn't have the app installed or or because someone gave you a link and that took you to the mobile browser first and then it says, oh, do you want to use the app? When you hit Twitter from a mobile browser, Safari or Chrome, uh, uh, whether you're Android or iPhone, you're on what they call Twitter Lite. They uh, created this in 2017 and um, they did it because they realized that uh, Twitter, one of the barriers for Twitter in certain countries and certain places was low bandwidth. So this is, <clears throat> thrives on low bandwidth. So this is the way they, they went about it. And um, so the bandwidth, you know, remains to be a, a challenge. I'm showing you another screen here. Uh, here's some results. So after they went to this, they got 65% increase in uh, pages per session. That's a you know, big lift. I mean, if you can move the needle a few points, you feel great. They got a 65 point lift. 75% increase in tweet sent from mobile, this is all about the mobile experience, and 20% decrease in bounce rate. So those are you know pretty significant just because they went to PWA. I mean, really, that's the only difference. Um, here's Starbucks, super efficient app. Look at the size of this app. The whole app, and this app in particular, is one of the ones that I feel like you would never feel like, you, you feel like the native app. It's actually faster than the native app, it's only 233K instead of the, the native app is 148 megabytes. So that's a 99.84%. You know, so think about you know, conserving bandwidth, you know, data going over the wires. Sooner or later, it's gonna, you know, we're gonna clog them up, right? Unless we stay out ahead of that. So anytime you can reduce the amount of data you're sending and reduce the amount of data that you're saving, it's a benefit. You know, you're not gonna run out of storage, you're not gonna clog up your bandwidth. So these are, Google's all about this, you know, that you think about it, if anything, Google's about pipes as much as anything, and uh, they're, they're loving it. So that's why they've led the charge here. Uh, so here's, if you look at Starbucks, 36 million uh, users a month, and uh, this is less about stats and just kind of some general things here, but, you know, it looks and feels like a native app. It, in emerging markets, it's gonna be perfect, so anytime they're launching a Starbucks in some emerging market, uh, which I think is ironic, uh, they, uh, you know, and they might not have bandwidth, but they got lattes, okay? Uh, and then, um, and the customer can, you know, cust they can actually go in there and customize their food drinks. And I mean, there's really no limit. It's very, very efficient. Uh, the geolocation is amazing. You know, I played with this on my phone and you know, find a store and pulls right up. It's just, just 
feels good. Um, so here's Instagram. So if you might remember uh, not that long ago, Instagram, if you went there from a mobile browser, you could see your profile, you could see your timeline, but you couldn't really do anything. You couldn't add any pictures, you couldn't do much of anything else. So now this is the PWA version of it. it you know, shows your friends, your icons, it's got uh, you know, it just really has that kind of feel of a native app. Um, you know, it's got search and activity tabs. It looks right, right? And for the most part, um, well, actually, if you're on mobile, I think in every case, if you go there with a mobile browser, it will take you, if there is a PWA, they're going to take you to the PWA. If you tried to get to any of these from your desktop, you might want to pay attention to these URLs I'm sharing. They're usually just the baseline URL, but once you get there, sometimes you'll see it's a little different, like it'll be M dot whatever, or um, Starbucks, I think, has the word app in it at some point. Um, so from your desktop, you would never see that intuitively unless you knew the exact URL. And then you can pull it up on your desktop. It works across all platforms. It's just that they've decided that, well, if you're on a desktop, you could benefit from some of the other bells and whistles. But who doesn't want to benefit from speed and you know and fluidity? So anyway, that's that's just the current mindset. So um, you know, PWAs do allow you, to, uh, or the Instagram version does allow you to add pictures, but there are some limitations. Uh, you can't tag users. You can't add a location. You can't share pictures with other social networks. Now I would say, you know, check back in a year. I mean, that's how fast things are moving. Um, uh, here we also have, uh, you know, you can't receive notifications through the app, uh, through uh, Instagram, uh, the mobile one, or send direct messages. But still, in a pinch, it's a, it's a, it's a really, really good thing. Um, so you, Uber, this, if there was an app, you would expect this to be a great use for it. And uh, I was, it was the only one of the dozen or so that I loaded up on my phone and played around with that I, it was just miserable. And I got into these endless loops on um, like trying to log in, you know, no, that's not your login, re change your password, change my password. Okay, thank you, great, log in. Nope, that's not your password, what? You know, it's like, are you kidding me? You know, so I don't know what was going on there. Something was cached or whatever, but it was just frustrating. Finally got logged in and then I get to, oh, uh, well, your location service is turned off. I'm going, no, it's not. Yes, it is. You know, it's like, <laughs> after you go. It's like, so I don't know. Obviously, it works for some people because, you know, I've seen screenshots of people using it. Let's put it that way. But uh, I, I hate to bag on them, but it's the only one that, that one didn't work. Tinder, I'm not a big Tinder user, but uh, according to one of my team members, uh, she said, well, the desktop version supports push notifications, also has a boss work mode button, and pulls up a fake screen and then and you can swipe using the keyboard. Uh, I said to her, just saying, huh? Okay. <laughs> I've seen you know a lot about Tinder. She said, no, 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 I read all that. Uh-huh. Okay. But here is the uh, here is the results of that. Um, so get this, you know, you remember the, the number for Starbucks? Tinder's <laughs> 43 million as opposed to 36 million. Uh, by the way, these blue links link to the, the case studies and uh, the information uh, when you get the PDF from me. Um, but uh, so users, the things they learned is that users message more when they're on the PWA. They edit their profile more when they're on the PWA. And of course, on an app like Tinder, it's all about your profile. That's not kind of fleshed out. LinkedIn's like that too. If you don't really have much information and then people don't know much about you. And then um, and the sessions are longer. So that's that. Everybody heard of Flipkart before? Well, it's like the Amazon of uh, India. It's huge. Uh, it's the biggest uh, online e-commerce site in um, India. Uh, they do everything from fashion, electronic books, etc. cetera. Um, and you know, just the, the pop-up menu there is like, oh my gosh, this goes on forever. And all those things go deeper and deeper. Um, it was fast. It was like, I was pulling up just hundreds and hundreds of images. I was whipping around in this thing. I was pretty, pretty good. Uh, but here are their results. They have 36 million, so about the size of Starbucks in terms of monthly traffic. And they have, um, you know, three times lower data usage, which seems like they aren't as efficient as some of the apps because we were seeing a huge, you know, reduction in size. But still, 3x is, you know, significant. 
three times more time on the site, 40% higher engagement rate, 70% greater conversion rate. That's 70% conver better conversion rate? Are you kidding me? That's, that's un you know, if I can move the needle two points for a customer, they're, they're, they're going like, who are you? You know, you're walking on water. So that's crazy. So this is a common theme. Every one of these companies, the thing motivated them was a, they wanted a better user experience and the thing they got was more engagement, more conversion. Um, you know, I, I love it. So this is uh, Washington Post. This Salish is their, uh, their tech, uh, chief product and technology officer. But he goes on, I like the quote because he's saying, you know, readers want instant load times. You know, who wants to wait? You just want to be able to interact with the content. And he, you know, he feels like this is game-changing technology. And they, are, they were an early adopter and, uh, again, great results. Uh, you know, 23% of mobile searches came back within seven days. Meaning, that's a, that's a, I haven't seen that metric before quite like that. But the point is, if I was there, I found some stuff, and it worked really well for me. So the next time it I comes up, I'm coming right back because I know it's working for me. 88% uh, improvement in load times, that's huge. Um, you know, the Washington Post, uh, by the way, they publish a thousand articles a day using the AMP technology, which, which is also a Google technology, and it's built into, you know, so it's the way you prep your content so it's structured so that it can be loaded and understood really quickly, and, it, and it's read better by Google and other search engines. Forbes, uh, again, they wanted this, a better experience, and their results, 43% increase in sessions per user, 20% increase... 100% increase in engagement rates. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, and I don't know if that was they had none, now they have one. Uh, you know, but but uh, it sounds great, right? Uh, so, and then uh, six times increase in the number of readers completing an article. See, I, I think that's an interesting stat because if it's painful, you just say, ah, it's not worth getting to the end of this. So, uh, so uh, Pinterest, uh, they were only... They, they really saw that they had a, a very slow website um, for mobile and uh, that uh, only 1% of all their visitors were actually visiting and signing up or you know, actually engaging with them. Um, so they decided to do a PWA, 40% increase in time spent on the, on the mobile site, 44% uh, uh, increase in user-generated ads revenues, 50% um, increase in click-throughs on their ads, 60% increase in engagement. I mean, these are crazy numbers. So, so that as marketers, uh, if, if you're in that role, and or developers, um, you know, want to engage, you definitely, you know, speed is a big factor. So uh, I'm not going to try to read any of this to you, but so and resources. I have a couple of really cool tools. The second one, P, uh, PWA Rocks, is probably about a dozen or more. PWA sites all in one place. You just click, you're there. And uh, it's kind of a fun way to, you know, see a lot of uh, stuff in, in person. Any of these that I've showed with you, you can just you go to them, download them, and just save them to your phone, and you'll, you'll be pretty impressed how quickly they load. And then this last one down here, if you're a little more techie, that's the Google Developers um, uh, Information Site. And it's, it's kind of nice. It starts off very layman. You know, let me just explain what's going on. And then as you, every link you click, you suddenly, you, before you know it, you're in code and stuff. But you, you, know, you can get a lot from that first few levels, just understanding how it works and the history, there's some videos, it's really, really quite good. A lot of case studies, that's where some of this information came from. And then the references, uh, just you know, a number of really good articles. Several of these, the first two there for sure, uh, are about uh, you know, just great examples, which are, may overlap that other site, but they're quite different. And, uh, so that's progressive web apps. You all think, feel like you know a little bit more about that? Yeah. That was whirlwind, right? I was like, Very good. so um, any, any questions about any of that? Or? What are some of the basics just to get started? Well, um, so I will say this about, uh, there's uh, something I didn't put in here. There's kind of two different uh, approaches to uh, progressive web app right now. There's several turnkey uh, click and point sites or companies out there that will allow you to build PWAs that I would say would be useful at the level of uh, we're doing a pizza shop or we're doing a, you know, a local business or a small chain of local businesses, um, you know, where they, there isn't an economic model to go and do custom development. 
and they're pretty good. One's called Good Barber, but they're they're very good too, and I, I can get you their resources. Uh, I'm more about wanting to know. In both cases, you really couldn't um, tie and integrate another technology with that. You're just building a little standalone scheduling app or or shopping app or something of that nature. Um, I'm more about wanting to you know, integrate this with a company's existing database or s sales efforts or marketing efforts or whatever it might be. And so at that point you have to uh, you know, kind of roll your own. One of the interesting things is if anybody is interested, uh, you know, heard of React, which is a, a development technology that came out of Facebook. What we learned in exploring this is that all this progressive technology that you need is already in React. You just have to expose it. Like it's there waiting to be turned on. It's just like, well, we flipped the switch. It's like, oh, all the libraries, everything. It's like, bam. So that was kind of neat. So that's my talk. Hopefully that was useful. This is, this is me. That's, that's for when I publish it. You'll know how, who I am. But, so thank you. No questions. I'll say done.